Hello, everybody. So we have a real treat. We get asked a lot why we use the UTM schemas we use and pretty much what UTMs are a lot. So we brought in in our attribution all-star, the savant of tracking everything on the interwebs, Corey. Corey, how goes it? Great, man. I'm excited to, to help answer some of these questions. You know, UTMs have been around for a long time, but we haven't needed them. <laughs> and so... Unfortunately, we're at a point where Facebook is just not printing money anymore, and so we got to step it up a bit and start learning about UTMs and how do we get tracking down pack. I love it. So just jumping out, UTM's urchin tracking module kind of comes from some history of a company that got purchased by Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We won't get too much into the history, but kind of give us the skinny on why UTMs are important and kind of what they do. And uh, I can throw some visuals up when needed and let's rock and roll. So cool. So I guess we can start with uh, Facebook, right? Facebook. Um, how has Facebook been tracking, right? Like how has Facebook been finding out that someone clicked on an ad and, you know, con attributing that purchase back to that? Well, if, if yep. you've noticed, uh, when you click on an ad on Facebook, there'll be this FBCLID equals some jumble mumble, right? And and this identifier, only Facebook knows what it means. Inside of Facebook, Facebook says, oh, we, we reserve this click ID at this moment of time of the click. So we know the user that clicked. We know the time that they clicked. We know the position that they clicked. And all the, we know the campaign. We know the ad set. We know the ad. And so... Um, this is why Facebook and, and Google does the same thing with the Google uh, G cell ID. And, and, and so they're using URL parameters uh, to identify where the click came from and to attribute that. So we as advertisers um, and, and performance marketers know where to double down and, and where to pull off. And, and so, um, yeah, it, it's been around for a long time. And, and we just didn't need to set up UTMs because Facebook had the FBC ID. <laughs> now that this FBC ID has become... Um, not as useful uh, for a lot of us due to the tracking and all the things that are going on with privacy. Um, we won't we won't open that that can of worms, but uh, <laughs> there's a lot going on there. Uh, but now um, some some of us advertisers have been using UTMs for a while with Google Analytics, right? We have the, the source okay. we have the source medium report, and so Google Analytics wouldn't know what to do with the Facebook click ID because only Facebook has that data. And so we need to add ah. this little bit of information to the end of our URL. So now in our Google Analytics accounts, we could see, you know, um, what was the source of this traffic, you know, and, and all these different insights that we may be interested in. Okay. So what we've done in Triple Well, we're, we're recommending a set of UTMs uh, that could be useful for you. Uh, some people want to put at more stuff in their UTM. Some people want to put less stuff. Uh, now, important to get to the important piece, if you want to bring up the UTM builder really quick, uh, just to kind yeah, of show absolutely. them what uh what what this will look like. I mean, this is this is high level production here, people. All right, <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not <laughs> sure if we're gonna see this in post a little bit cleaner. Um, oh, is this is it not is that better? Yeah, we we got a little pixelation going though. Um, oh man, I gotta <laughs> upgrade the interwebs then, I guess. Oh no, that's okay. I'm at the new office. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so it's, it's pixelated. It'll be actually proper in post because it's downloading a local file. But Perfect. Okay, so... Glad we didn't stream it. <laughs> nice, nice. So at the end of this uh, UTM, you'll see this and FB ad ID. And if you just want to highlight that then for them with the mouse, if you can. Yes, I can. Okay, so at the end of that URL, we see the FB ad ID. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, 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 yes. There. So this... Can I stop you real quick, Corey? Yeah. Why does every UTM have to start with the question mark? So uh, the question mark is uh, a precautionary for us. So okay. if you are putting – there's two places you can put UTMs. You can put UTMs in the actual website URL. Yep. Or you can put UTMs in a specific spot. When you scroll down in your Facebook ad setup, you'll see a section called URM parameters. Now, if you're yep. if you're putting UTMs, yeah, let's let's take them there. Let's, so let's go to the website URL first. Uh, so yep. let's, let's scroll up a little bit. All right. Oops. Sorry, folks. Here we go. Where am I at here? Where is our URL? Oh man, I, oh because I broke it oh, instead of instant experience. Aha. Uh -huh. um, we're right here. There we go. Cool. So right, yeah. So so you you have your website <laughs> right there. If you were to just paste in UTMs without a question mark, that would break that URL. And we do not want to break that URL. Okay. So the question mark denotes uh, denotes that this is the domain 
And everything after is just some additional information for some um, process later. And so Powerful. that is why that question mark is needed. And and um, and so now if you're putting in the UTMs, if you scroll down to the tracking section, well, there you wouldn't necessarily need the question mark, but you still can put the question mark there. Um, essentially, when we look at your URL, we're going to look for everything after the question mark. So if you got two question marks, if you got five question marks, if you got ten, we're just looking at whatever's after the question marks end. Okay, so that's why that question mark was there in the recommended uh, U U uh, UTM parameters. So nothing to be concerned about. If you're putting them in the tracking section, you do not need the question mark. If you're putting it in the website URL, you do need the question mark. Okay, cool. So if you are, you don't need the question mark in here, but Facebook's smart enough to know. And to your point, they'll just keep they'll just, going until they get data after a question mark, basically, yeah, right? Facebook will automatically append the question mark on the click of the ad because um, they cool. know what you're doing there. And why, and why don't we? Wasn't there? Yeah, go ahead. I was, wasn't there something cool that you were telling me um, offline about it's actually better practice to use these URL parameters Correct. versus actually throwing everything up in just the big website URL? What were you telling me? Maybe enlighten the listeners. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, depending on your, you know, uh, your click through, you're trying to improve your click through rates. And so, you know, some people are putting URLs in their actual primary text. And so if you put a URL in your primary text, and you've chosen to put your UTMs in this website URL, what we're currently looking at, the URL in the primary text will just take them directly to your website. So if, if we had triplewell.com, uh, try triplewell.com in our primary text, if someone clicked that, it would just take them directly to try triplewell.com. And we would have no, we, in, in that situation, we wouldn't really have UTM parameters because it was in the primary text. So in this, like, we wouldn't see this. Um, and that's what we want to see. And so the only way we're going to see that if someone clicks a link in our primary text is if we have put UTMs in the tracking section, the, um, not in the actual URL. And so you can actually put them in both places. Um, but Facebook has done some of the heavy lifting. They're saying any link that someone clicks on this ad, we're going to use the tracking parameters that the advertiser has put here. And so, so this cool. is the recommended place to put them. Um, so that way, right any any link that you have in your primary text. Now, be careful if you're using link shortening. If you're using some kind of Bitly or some kind of link shortener in your primary text, you need to go and refactor those those um, short shortened URLs, okay? And to put in your UTMs because someone clicks on that, for example, Bitly link, it's going to resolve to whatever that Bitly link is. Our UTMs will hit bit, Bitly, but then Bitly will send them to the website without the UTMs. So we can, yep. you know, Bitly should probably actually, I don't know, maybe they shouldn't do that. But anyway, <laughs> you need to be careful with your shorteners and the recommended places to put it in the tracking. You know, too long didn't read, Love put UTMs it. in the tracking section, confirm your short links have UTMs as well. I love it. So you can take your UTMs. We have all the UTMs that you need in the UTM builder. I can pull that back up. Um, but it's super easy peasy. All you do is grab this, throw them at the end of your UTMs. Um, life is good. We have them for all the channels. All of these are dynamic. Um, and let's discuss something here for a second, Rob, because some some of some, yeah. some people may already have UTMs, right? They may have uh, UTM site source. Uh, they they may be doing all different kinds of UTMs. UTM placement. I've I've seen people yep. uh, using all different types of UTMs, and so they don't necessarily yep. need to change their current UTMs. Okay. Correct. All they need to do is copy the and FB ad ID equals ad ID, right? They only need to copy that specific part and add it to what they're already doing, right? You don't have to change your UTMs. Okay, now. Interesting. Correct. I did not know that. Correct. Yeah, because if we have the ad ID, we the, the ad ID knows what ad set it's in, and the ad ID also knows the campaign it's in, so we can infer that information. You're right. It's like, in a weird way, the, the social security number of a Facebook ad, right? Because all of them, every Facebook ad is essentially its own post. And so you can't have any duplicate posts Correct. or duplicate websites. And so... Uh, great great, seg really great segue. Great segue, actually. Uh, it's completely unique. And so if you're using yeah. names, you know, some people have said, like, why can't you just use our, our names? Uh, we don't want to update, uh, you know, our UTMs because that could push things back into review. 
And first things first is if you have some things that are, you know, to the moon and they're and and, and they're they're very profitable for you. I, right. I would be cautious of, of changing those because it's already profitable. And so what are you really looking to really, really learn there? Um, you would definitely have some more insights. You get real-time orders, right? There are some fancy things that you get inside a triple L that may be advantageous. But I don't know if it's worth playing that game. Blowing up the ship. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, um, you know, maybe start with your, 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 your ads that you're definitely interested in or you're willing to potentially send back in a review. Um, yep. and, and then for people that are using names and say like, why, why can't you just use my names? Well, names changes, um, campaign names change, ad set, ad set names change, uh, ad names change. Okay. And casing issues. And then also you may have another ad, uh, and another, you may have another campaign. Listen, I've seen some crazy, uh, UTM setups and, and just naming conventions the dash copy baby like how many times did you duplicate this thing yeah we we did a survey just so you guys know we did a survey of all all of the uh, all of the triple the triple custies and utms are all over the place okay um so if if you have something that you think should work you know shoot it over to us we'll check it specifically and and let you know yep. if that's going to work um but for the most part just throw in the ad id if you already have utms and if you don't have any utms just copy what you give you and slap that in and that's, you know, brilliant. Let's start seeing the success. I love it. So just to recap then, so let me get back to our fun. So if you have, so basically all you'll need is UTM source and ad ID. Those are the only things we need for Facebook. And then we can infer everything else so they can use. We even, uh, we even we, don't even need UTM source because we said F. B ad ID. So because it's FB ad ID, oh, we know it's Facebook. Snap. And so Damn, I, I purposely did big that. Big brain moves. Yeah. This is big brain moves. So you literally don't need to. Wow. Yeah. That's actually really cool. I mean, so the too long didn't read though is you would still be changing the destination link. Therefore, you're um, changing the ad in such a way that it is going to set it back into the learning phase. So what Corey was saying is you, if you have some colors crushers or some evergreen ads that are doing really well, it might not be advantageous to break them just to add this, but launching future ads, the only thing that you would have to do is actually add this um, ampersand FB ad ID and then the uh, dynamic ad ID. Wow. I didn't even and know listen, that. You we're, know, we're like, learning, you know, we got this. the bro, we got the bro science going. Did this, it's sending it back into review. You know, we're, we're, we're all scared of learning phases and stuff like that. Um, but I can say there's been a lot of products out there. I won't drop any names. Um, but there are, a lot of, there are a lot of companies that have been asking you to change UTMs, and we haven't heard yep. any horror stories uh, from that. So, you know, tr yeah. tread lightly. Yeah, exactly. Don't, don't do it if you don't need to. But uh, I, I don't think it's going to be a, a significant issue. Just err on the side of caution, yeah. I guess. If, if you have something that's extremely profitable, Yep. What are what are what are you you know looking to get from it? So just leave it alone, I guess. In that case, I love that, Corey. You you, you talked us all things UTM. So it stands for Urchin Tracking Module, so you can impress your friends at the next dinner party. <laughs> um, what they are is just little pieces, parameters, if you will, if we want to be precise in the nomenclature. Um, and the reason why people think of source, median, campaign, term, and content as the only UTMs that exist are because without a app like Triple Whale or GA, UTMs don't have any purpose because there, there's two points. It's always how you're, your beautiful little bifurcation of tracking and reporting, right? Like UTMs are the tracking part, but if there's no way to visualize and report on that data, it doesn't matter if you have the best UTM structure. And so... This way so this well. is where exactly you see people doing all kinds of crazy things. I think I think maybe um, I think it would have been uh, one of the largest uh, Facebook media buyer groups. Uh, they gave a specific snippet that you should use, and so they started to stuff things in UTM stores. They started to stuff things into Medium because in GA you can't see these other UTM placements. So now you got a stuff yep. UTM placement inside of UTM source because GA will show it. And yeah. so yeah, listen, just um. Start start asking questions to Triple L. Get on the call, set up a demo, and we'll get you straight. <laughs> That's it. Um, and like always, all the schemas are in the UTM builder, so you can get that. Uh, what else did we not cover? So we covered all the ads. It will send it back into the learning phase. Um, so be cognizant of that. 
Um, TikTok works, Snapchat works, Pinterest works, Google ads works. Uh, we do have a generic URL builder if that tickles your fancy, but yeah, folks, pretty yeah. easy peasy. It's mm -hmm. a, it's a, it's a confusing, but yet actually fairly, uh, simple subject. Once you kind of get your head around it, where, um, you're essentially just kind of putting little tags around this, uh, URL. And then those tags are passed on to either GA or triple L or whatever, uh, platform you're using to report on that traffic. And then, uh, if you have a triple pixel, it's even better because we're doing even more, Yeah. but, uh, anything else, Corey, what else do we miss? If you're not on triple whale, I don't know. I, uh, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing here, people? Yeah, Corey, always a pleasure, my man. You're the best. Uh, go follow Corey on the Twitters. He's amazing. What's your handle? Um, good luck spelling it. If, if you end up okay. following me from this, kudos to you. It's <laughs> at Corey Canestrare. <laughs> Can, C-A-N, established E-S-T, rare, R-A-R-E. <laughs> I had to <laughs> learn that. Luck. I had to learn that. <laughs> UTMs might learning UTMs might be easier than remembering that name, but hey, we're here for you, people. If you need us, um, oh yeah, one last thing. Like Corey said, uh, we do have a uh, complimentary if you are a Triple L user and we, you want us to check out your schema. Um, Corey and the team will check it out. And make sure you have um, everything that is operational and you're not sending things to dead URLs. Because, um, like Corey said, if you do mess this up and you forget that question mark, you will break your URLs, um, and so you'll be sending traffic to exactly. uh, basically. Uh, a 404, it was more important for no me to protect customers URL than it was to do it the way it could have been done. Right. Like if I didn't put the yep. question mark there and someone accidentally placed that in the wrong spot, it would have, it would have, it would have, the ad would have got rejected and then a whole nother slew of things. So I did it as a precautionary measure to make sure nothing broke in your account. Exactly. We're not about problems. We're about solutions here at Triple Well. Here we go. <laughs> All right, folks. Thanks again Peace for out. stopping in. Corey, you're the man. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.